Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Shorty on the Fly. Today, we're going to change things up just a little bit. I'm going to tie for you um, what I call a Waltz Worm Blowtorch in pink. Uh, but I'm going to give you a couple of little insights as to what I'm doing with this and how it fits in with the uh, with my process of putting together a box and so forth. You'll see that at the end. So sometimes we have to substitute materials and usually a blowtorch fly uh, uses, um, they'll use orange uh, antron yarn, like a fluorescent antron yarn for the tail and then for the uh, collar and whatnot. So I went to do this and I didn't have any of that. But what I did have was some of this craft yarn. And that's a pretty good pink color. And so I thought, you know what, I'll bet I can use that. So I did. So I cut off a piece and it's, it's a two strand thing. So what we did is we have to cut that piece off. Okay. And actually there's three strands in there. And then we have to kind of pull them apart. So we get one that's the appropriate size. Okay. So that's what we're going to do with that. All right, and then I'll talk to you a little bit more about some other potential substitutions we can use because a lot of times, you know, we think we have to have this exact recipe or the fly won't work, and that's just not the case. So I have got a 1XL nymph hook in size 14 that I'm putting in the vise with a silver tungsten bead on it, and I'll show you something else about um, that something you might have to deal with with a bead once in a while happens. So I'm using a uh, point 15, 15 thousandths um, lead wire and I'm going to wrap that around like 10 times and then snap it off with my thumb and then snap the other end off as well and then shove that into the bead. Now, if you look, that bead wants to go back over those lead wraps and sometimes that happens. To go another size bigger with the lead, I'm not comfortable with because then it gets too big and bulky. So I'm just going to fix that with my thread. I'm going to start the thread right behind the lead and then wrap that up to just in back of the bead and start making some turns there and building up the bulk on the lead wraps. And then it's not going to move. See how we fix that? Easy fix easy easy fix now let's run the thread back to just behind the lead wire and reach for that strand of uh, yarn that we had before I'm gonna come in and trim that up just to make sure I've got that nice and even for my tie-in and use a pinch wrap to tie that in okay and then all the way back to the bend of the hook and I'm gonna trim this off about the gap of the hook okay here we are now we got two ribs on this fly the first one is going to be brassy sized silver wire and I'm gonna run my thread back up to about where the lead is tie that in on the far side of the hook and then bring my thread back up to that same point and I'm gonna tie in a strand of sulky sliver metallic in the 8040 number uh, and this is along the lines of a mirage opal tinsel or a um, a crystal flash pearl crystal flash if that's what you have by all means use it it's not going to make that much difference I don't think it makes any difference this is what I happen to have this is what I'm gonna put in there uh, and it works for the size for what I want to do but again if you don't have this and you have some other material that achieves the same uh, coloration the same look by all means use that instead if that's what you have now for the body I'm using good old-fashioned homemade hair's ear dubbing I'm putting a little wax on the thread okay and I'm just gonna spin this on in little wisps and uh, we're going to create, oh, about a three, three and a half inch dubbing noodle on here. And again, I'm, I'm spinning it on. It's off camera. You can, you know how to do this. This is not something that takes a great deal of skill. Okay. And then once I have that ready to go, I'm going to begin to wrap. 
right up the hook shank with touching turns. I'm going to cover all of the underbody up and we'll end right there. Look at that, right behind the bead, right where I want it. Now the first, I'm going to wrap the wire first um, and I want five wraps. So I'm going to take that first wrap right about there and make sure the third wrap is about in the center portion of the hook. Okay, now we're at the center port. Now we're to the next, and now we're to the next. And now I've got my five evenly spaced wraps. I'm gonna come in and trap that with my thread with three or four wraps right over top of it, and then helicopter the wire to break it off. And now I'm gonna take the wraps of the sulky, and I'm going right in between the previous wraps of the wire and it might not look at it like you know while it's in the vise but when you take that out of the vise and hold that thing up to uh, natural light man does that look alive it's just it it just that little shimmer in there makes it look like a bug I don't know what bug you know waltz worm but okay and now I'm just gonna take and build a little collar up here to give us the color and the collar. And there you have it, we're gonna whip finish. And that's our Waltz Worm blowtorch. And this one's in pink. But what I wanna show you here, and we're gonna back out a little bit so you can kind of see. These are the last two flies going into a panel of yet another one of these big boxes that I do that one's going in right there let me get that closer to me so I can see what I'm doing okay we'll get that put in and I'll talk to you while I'm doing that and I'll I'll show it to you again okay that one's in okay and now we'll put the last one in and then I'll talk to you just a little bit about the box here so what I have here is some different patterns. Up here I was doing pheasant tails, silver pheasant tail, gold pheasant tail, copper pheasant tail. Then we did the regular blowtorch, which is done with the peacock hurl body. I have orange, pink, and chartreuse. We did the same thing, only this time with a waltz worm. Orange, pink, chartreuse. So you can see you're creating what's essentially a different pattern, but a, a different fly but with basically the same pattern. All I'm doing is altering the material, the size of the hook, uh, and but we get the same, you know, a similar uh, look, a similar feel for what we're trying to accomplish here. So I will keep you uh, posted as this box becomes more and more complete, but that's what we're talking about in the fly design, you know, just changing up a little bit here and there and you get yourself a whole new pattern to play with. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a comment, a like, or have somebody else subscribe. As always, I bid you peace.